What the fuck is up, everybody? Welcome to The Fuckery with Leslie Jones and Lenny Marcus. I'm Lenny Marcus. And I am Leslie Jones. And this is the podcast where the mission is to keep it 100 at all times. We talk about the fuckery going on in the world and in our lives and having a whole lot of fun doing it. This week in studio, we have an amazing actor on the show. He stars in P Valley, Nico Anand. I can give it! I can give it you don't want to miss it, <laughs> plus the fucker of the week. But first, it's time for What the Fuck is Up? Leslie, oh, we, Jesus Christ. <laughs> since Friday, Jesus Christ. I don't know what happened Friday. I was saying, I don't know if no, it's your whole, astrological the, nightmare before yeah, your sign kicks in. that's what I want to ask. Yeah. Is there some kind of, they said it's solstice time, but I thought it was supposed to be a good thing. But obviously it means that we burn it in hell <laughs> daily because my, that, I last week sucked, sucked. big balls son. sucked and it, it got worse sucked. and friday it was hilarious we oh, uh, we had a tv Jesus. show that we pitched and worked on for three years and they decided nah. really like in that's three years three now years. that didn't piss me off even more i didn't know it was three yeah years. like now three really years and it didn't go and then it you... didn't go and it wasn't our fault no well, we tried and then you know nobody we tried we tried we worked on it a million no. times for million three times. ways from sunday didn't work and then uh, you were on your way to do Mark Barron and promote our lovely podcast, and then somehow that went awry. <laughs> and then you got the cops were involved. And oh then, my god! Okay, what <laughs> happened do you was start with this nightmare. Well, well, what happened was I fucking missed Mark Barron's fucking podcast because somebody gave me the wrong fucking time. So I was fucking so mad. I was so mad. I pulled off the freeway because I I didn't want to drive mad because you know it's just not safe and see how responsible i am <laughs> i pulled the fuck off the freeway and it was in glendale i pulled into a gas station and you know how you have they have the parking spaces i pulled into the parking space but you know i didn't pull in right it was a little crooked so um i i guess i sat there too long or whatever because the glendale police dude pulls in front i don't know if he was just going to the store or whatever but he comes and he's like yeah can you like park so someone else can fucking come like so i got out the car like i was like can i get out the car he was like yeah i mean yeah i mean as long as you don't beat me up i was like i'm not worried about getting i'm worried about you shooting me motherfucker like but but he was like he was like oh you know i just wanted to see why you was park like i was like oh are you going into the store or you really did stop to see he was like no i really like your car so i he i was he was like like, I really like the rims. I was like, well, I fucked up. And we ended up getting into a nice conversation because I was like, I ended up fucking up my rims. I showed him where I fucked my rims up. And he was like, oh, man, you can't do that. And I was like, yeah, man. He was like, well, I'm jealous. I was like, how the fuck you jealous? You a fucking cop. You could just kill me and take this truck. <laughs> and he just started laughing. <laughs> Why the fuck would I say some stupid shit like that? But he just like went on about his way and he was like, have a good day. And I was like, I'll move my truck. You know, I just got the fuck out of Glendale. That's what that told me. That told me to get the fuck out of Glendale. You can't sit 20 minutes at a, I was at a gas station. Nice. Okay. At a gas station sitting. He don't know. I could have been waiting for gas. <laughs> Anything. This motherfucker. I was like, man, I'm still black. I'm still black. And this How is they say it in for, I'm still black. <laughs> this, this is on the back end of. Not, I was so miserable because we got that email late in the day, and I was so mm -hmm. mad about this because I really thought the show was going to go, and I was, like, depressed. And then I call you, and I'm like, can anything go right this week? It was terrible. The assistant, you were having all kinds of problems there. It was nightmare in New York. So, And it, it's, like, Africa hot in here, in, in New York City. So it's like, okay, it's all, it's all horrible. So then you, on your way to the Marin thing, say the following words. It's going to be okay, Lenny. It's going to be okay. And I'm like, oh, my God. Nothing frightens me worse than when I'm the miss I'm on that, that end of the conversation. <laughs> me not I'm saying that to you. One. Yeah. And so then, of course, within an hour. <laughs> oh, I was calling him like, this is some bullshit. <laughs> so we Burn it fucking down this fucking town. Fuck this town. I was ready to quit comedy by the end of the night. Yeah. Seriously. I was like, what I, happened? Then I go, <laughs> yeah, then I go to fucking Laugh Factory in Long Beach and chingaracito. Like, let me tell you something. Them motherfuckers, they was a good crowd, but it was like, oh, my God. It was so, I was so in my head. I was so in my head. And But I knew that the week was going to get better because my cook made me some tenderloin. And I had that shit like at 12.05. And I said, you know what? 
Shit's gonna fucking be better, goddammit. This motherfucking sandwich meat. This sandwich meat. That shit was so tender. I was like, okay, it's Sunday. This we starting over. Oh, okay. We starting so over. that was by Sunday. So, but this was Friday, which we called now the carousel of misery. Because you would get hit in the face, and then uh, I would get hit in the face. It uh, was bad. Well, but listen, you know what? It'll be hey, better this week. Know. It's going to be better this week with this show. I think this is turning it. Once uh, you know Uncle Clifford gets in here, we're going to be in. We're going to kick off. Listen, Man. so I got to tell you this. I can't wait to even see my nails. So Birdie <laughs> and I, do you remember this a couple weeks ago? Your advice. We had to confront my doorman, and there's been a lot of chatter from the New York crowd. I've been getting <gasps> a lot of people texting me about, "Did you confront the doorman, Kent? And you believe? Will your doorman say anything?" I'm like, he doesn't speak good English. He's not listening. To a podcast, he has no idea what I do. He probably just thinks this guy just does nothing and his wife works. He just runs in and out all day. So now the two of us, one on Saturday, we're like, this is it. This is it. Friday was messed. I'm like, we're doing it. This is the day. And we see him <laughs> and we go. We see him in the thing and we, she's, he goes, oh, hi, Bindi. Like, right? And she goes, it's Birdie. And I say, it's Birdie. You know her name is Birdie. And then he goes, oh, <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> and that was it. And so we go upstairs and we tell. I guarantee you, he's probably like, I don't give a f- fuck. I don't think he understood what we were saying. She has a stupid fucking name. Her name I, should be Bent. I don't think I don't think he understood a word. So we go upstairs and Gina said we told her, and Bertie goes, he just laughed <laughs> and ran off. And, you know, that was it. <laughs> Well, we. What we'll do I gotta see. do? We'll see if he comes. No, he's still calling I, her Bindi every morning since he didn't get oh it. He does not understand. Okay, I mean, damn, I don't know. You might have to do some care and shit and be like, <laughs> complain to the manager. Just jump like, up and Yo, down. It's Bernie. <laughs> It's fucking Bernie. What, what is, language does he speak? Does he speak Spanish? I think Spanish. Yeah, I'm gonna be like. Uh, how do you say well, my, her I, name is Birdie somebody, in Spanish? You know somebody, you know somebody Spanish, and have them teach you how to say "Cómo te llama, I think it is right. Yeah, yeah. "Cómo te llama, "Cómo te llama, Birdie. Her yama is Birdie. <laughs> 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 he's gonna think you're talking about a llama. Uh, yeah, <laughs> she's gonna. He's no. gonna call a llama. That's the. Oh. No, no, they're gonna tell you exactly what to say. Uh, yeah, the, the Marina's looking. Going, right, yeah, thanks, I know exactly Marina. what the fuck to say. Um, she knows what to say. But meanwhile, you were supposed to come here last week. That's you, funny as fuck. You, you didn't, but my week started amazing. That's why the end of the week made up for the beginning yeah. of the week. I went to that Yankees game at, in oh the seats, God. and every single human saw I me on that game. I didn't know it was the Mets. I yes. did not know it was the Mets. Remember, we uh, had this conversation that yes. I was going to try to get the tickets on the 22nd because I thought it was the Mets, and then the next day somebody it was going to be somebody else. Right. But you got to see the fucking the Mets. Mets. Like, oh, that's, Subway series. It was uh, so good. The dorky friends right, I took were Ain't that like amazing. Rumble in the Jungle type shit? Or, no, yeah. that's not the Rumble well, in the Jungle. Well, I mean, it's that's, not, yeah. that's boxing but we did see one of the best games of the year that came down to the ninth inning and oh man you know those seats the tears just rolls oh my but who who won though the yankees four two oh that's cool cool and then we oh man i bet y'all was going crazy we were going crazy and then the buffet was it still the same Uh, yes with COVID, so they don't care about monkeypox at all nothing nobody cares they don't give a shit it's over it's over for these but but it's not over you guys all gonna have polio and monkeypox and then be running around infecting everybody like fucking zombies see people think zombies (laughs) is dead motherfuckers it's gonna be infected motherfuckers okay do we turn into monkeys? Do I want? Do I go? In? I don't know. I, I, Lord have mercy. I swear to. I swear <laughs> for God, <laughs> I'm gonna kill some people. I swear to. L- listen, listen, listen. I'm setting the house up. Gina did not want. Didn't couldn't go to the game because she's like, oh, I want to. I'll stay with Birdie and this whole thing. Okay, mm-hmm. fine. So and then so I text her around nine o'clock. Hey, is Birdie asleep? How are you doing? She goes, oh, it's just great. She won't go to sleep, and she's doing donkey kicks in the bed as she throws stu- stuffed animals across the room. She goes, but how's your shrimp? Right? And I write back, lobster. And <laughs> 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 for Gina be killing me with that shit. Gina, first of all, y'all, man, y'all, man, you be- Man, y'all need to take a stern voice with Bert. Like, I, if I said to Birdie, Birdie, you better go lay your ass down, and I bet not see one goddamn kick. 
she would go straight to sleep. She just left you. <laughs> y'all, you think y'all so? Y'all so fucking nice. Yes. Y'all so nice. Ooh, pretty. <laughs> do, do, do you want to go to sleep? My mom would be like, let me have to come in that motherfucker. Let me have to come in that motherfucker. Okay? Because I done told y'all once, go to fucking bed. You're not going to be fucking sleepy in the morning and then don't want to go to school. Don't let me have to come in that motherfucker. That's so funny you said it like that because today, this morning, I said, go brush your teeth. And then she was like off in the corner. And I, I told her all her teachers are black and Spanish, right? And, and she yeah. off in the corner just goes, don't make, me, don't make me tell you to do it again. Like she was repeating how the teacher would say, say yeah, exactly. it. Yeah, And I was like, where did she? a black teacher like, yeah. listen, listen. But that's because y'all <laughs> send them little motherfuckers there so spoiled. And then they just think that, nah, that I ain't your mama. Get your ass over there. This, and I bet you she does everything that teacher tell her to do. Y'all so. better, t- man, the next time Birdie don't want to go to sleep, call me. I bet you she'll go to sleep if I tell her, Birdie, go to fucking sleep. <laughs> she'll go right to fucking sleep. She'll go, you, you can't this say that God word. This your God, mama. You can't say that I word. I know I can't say that goddamn word. You did, this a new one. This ass whooping. <laughs> ass whooping, Birdie. This your Auntie Leslie saying, go to fuck to sleep. They are, they <laughs> They're at the end of the summer, and these kids are losing their mind. Every day is a pizza party. I've had so much pizza, pizza, hot yeah, dogs, see, cupcakes. Yeah, that's because yeah. y'all spoil the They're shit. Spoiled, I, I yeah. mean, I listen, listen. I understand that we have fun times. Listen, I remember the times we went to pizza and shit. But my parents did not fucking take that. Like we did not run the fucking household. Right. Not, not really. Like you get. Oh, you don't want to eat that tonight? Oh, I guess somebody gonna be fucking starving, huh? Yeah. Take your ass into the room. Like it's just. We don't, so nice we, to we these do that too. We do that, but it's not no, like you don't. Yeah, no, we you do. don't. I've we, seen you with Birdie. Do. You are such a fucking girl dad, which is cool, <laughs> which is great because Birdie will be very adjusted, but she going to be fucking, she going to run that house. No, Man, no, if I came and stayed for a weekend, Birdie would be a different child. Well, that would be nice. We'd love you to come stay. I keep telling y'all, I keep telling y'all to bring her to LA with me. Like, oh no, I don't do that, Birdie. No, I don't do that. <laughs> Auntie Leslie don't do that. Uh-uh. What's that? <laughs> what you mean you don't know? Uh-uh. You do know. Get your ass over here. <laughs> I don't know. Oh man. Y'all so nice to her. I wish I had nice parents like that. Nope. Oh, I would be I did. would have murdered half of fucking Fort Bragg. Are you going Thank to- God my parents was hardcore. All right, our, one of our final things for I'm this crazy. segment is your party's coming up. Is there anything yeah. you're going to divulge on the epicness what do you mean? of your birthday party? It's going to be, I'm, well, we plan it for it to be epic. I mean, uh, I heard the last thing I heard was costume changes possible. Well, no, I'm not going to change. I want it to be an extravaganza. extravaganza and they don't understand that uh, extravaganza <laughs> that means that like i want the waitresses at all to have costumes on i want i want i want fire people you know them fire people that be throwing the shit i want i want a motherfucker that's dressed like like in stilts or some shit like i want it to be <laughs> like a fucking crazy and then i want it to just be chill good music good food you know, and then the singers, you know, we're going to get a band. We're going to have a band. We're going to have yeah. singers. We're going to have like, oh, my God, I can't wait to the singing part because like he's going to bring all the good singers. I'm pretty sure somebody's going to sing happy birthday to me, Ooh, which man. would be fucking awesome. That is great. Um, all right. I, I, I asked for very gorgeous bartenders, but I didn't know if that was offensive. So I was like, <laughs> hey, men and women, though, you know, <laughs> I think <laughs> that's offensive. I don't give a fuck because when they get there, I'm going to be like, well, I don't know if they told you, but you need to take off your clothes. <laughs> Not all of them. You don't have to take off all of them. But just maybe your shirt. Can you get like <laughs> me too for that now? I don't know. Nah. Not if you do not it. If I, not if you slip. Not if you slip them a couple of hundred and you say it in a real gentle way. Hmm. All right. You're really gorgeous. You should do this without a shirt. Thank you. I, I can maybe oh. get you a Oh, part. that wasn't for me? Okay. For a second, I was gonna take off. God, if you took off your shirt, I swear to God, I will fucking <laughs> Earl. Right here on the air. <laughs> uh, <laughs> welcome back to the show. It's time for Who the Fuck Is This? Leslie, going to sing it? Who the fuck is this? <laughs> this is where we welcome and interview a special guest on the show. Like we said at the top of the show, we have an amazing actor, dancer, and choreographer on the show today. He plays Uncle Clifford, the owner of The Pink, the famous, infamous strip club in the fictional town of Chukalisa, Mississippi, on the hit stars yeah! drama P-Valley. 
He has also appeared in Claws, Shameless, This Is Us, and Snowfall. Leslie is a huge fan of P-Valley, and I'm a huge fan of P-Valley now. Please welcome Nico Anon to the show. Nico! Yes! Down in the valley where the girls <laughs> get naked. <laughs> if you throw them bands, then you know she, she gon' shake it. I say one, two, break them. Three, four, <laughs> break them. These niggas grind hard, but these bitches grind harder. harder. Come on, Lenny, why your waist I, ain't I, moving? I, I, I can't Coming believe this is a song. Just to get at the bottom. Yes, the baby, it's a movement. Below. Yes, they Leslie, ready give for it to the them. Show. Leslie, the give the it to them. Don't let it take you so. We hey. been falling on the sky. Look, look easy. <laughs> look at my man. Look you at my bitches. Gates the walking on the ceiling. ceiling. You man. better go ahead and give it to them. Man, when I say by the fifth, sixth episode, I was like in my bed dancing, going motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got that shit on my own. I went and got it on, downloaded it on the, fucking the, iTunes. The, the theme song. Yes. Who cool. sings Juicy that? Fruit and Kato- Juicy Fruit. Juicy Fruit, she is a Southern rapper. I think Juicy Fruit, if, oh, Juicy, I don't want to say, I think you're from Memphis. Probably. I think Juicy Fruit is from Memphis. I know she's from the South. I'm I'm sorry, Juicy. Where, because where's the show? Uh... Our Katori Hall. Katori Hall is the showrunner and creator. Yeah. She, no, but I'm saying, where is it uh, uh, out of the, as far as the show? Where is the stage? What state is it uh, actually supposed to be? In Louisiana, Mississippi. Right? Mississippi. Mississippi. Mississippi, yeah. Okay. Chuka-Lisa. It's a fictional town. Uh, Chuckalisa. Come Chuka-Lisa. on. Chuckalisa. Sorry, sorry. Curl, so... Just curl, curl your lip and your tongue just Chuka-Lisa. a little bit. Chuckalisa. Chuckalisa. Go ahead, let's, let's go. There you no, go, baby. Oh you did it, though. You did it, though, like you was kissing some good pussy. Yes. <laughs> That's what you got to do when you want to say Chuckalisa. I said, let me I said, Liddy, you like it? He was like, yeah. I was like, it's the ass, huh? He was like, no. (laughs) Yes, it is. It's that ass. Listen, listen. The characters are great. Oh, my God. Mercedes is is... fucking, I feel like I know her. Like, I've known her for another life or something. Like, Oh my god, I fucking love her. Like, listen, so Brandy Evans does she the is damn the thing. Shit, absolutely. She is, absolutely. And, and like, you know, Nefertari. Yes, Nefertari. Yes, That's yes. Our good she buddy. writes with us. That's uh-huh. I've known her like twenty some years. She said that y'all like, and I was like, no. She he was like, no, he's a choreographer. I was like, yeah. Are you fucking serious? So do you uh, choreograph some of the? I did get to choreograph this season. I choreographed Uncle Clifford's birthday, the roller skating scene. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that was that. oh my god, that was yeah. so because uh, Duran was there. Uh-huh. Duran, yeah. Oh you my god, you better go ahead and know baby, all of the things. Baby, baby, all of the baby, things. Yes, <laughs> yes, you are here for it. Come on, I fucking first of all, I, I mean, I hate to say ally, I just fucking love you. <laughs> I just, I just let, let me loosen the goddamn disco. I fucking am like just yes. here on the ride and just will fucking flow through like a motherfucker. Like. I love it. I love the life. I think it's so free and oh. wonderful and just that fucking show, The Man Sex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't see that coming when I signed up for that. But, no, let you me know. tell you. What do you mean? You, what did you not see said, coming? When well, he I didn't said, see any of it coming. She goes, nigga, watch the show. I was like. <laughs> okay, so listen. Leslie, is that a thing as a woman, would you say? No, but you would never tell I, someone. To I will film me now. Up. Not that way. I would say it now. Like you, you know, women be like, "Come in, me, come inside me, baby," or R- something like that. R- right, but, but he's a thug. fill me up, nigga. I <laughs> would definitely say that next time. He is a gangster. Fill me up. Yes. Fill me up, <laughs> and I like petrol. <laughs> Oh, keep it unleaded for me over here, but premium. I'll take premium. <laughs> and how? It's just so many. Like it's just so fr- like I was telling Dennis. I was like Dennis. I don't know how the fuck you not watching this because Dennis is my hairdresser. Uh huh. And I was like, I don't know how the fuck you not watching this shit. Is so fucking. Good. Well, what's wrong love- with Dennis? Where Dennis? No, at? he should Dennis be watching is, that. That's a good show for he's Dennis. He's on. Dennis. Yeah. Dennis never gets to watch anything. Dennis is always, always working. working. He's gotcha. he's a uh, head of hair. On- everything for um, all the shows and, and fucking so amazing you would love him but i told him i was like dude you gotta watch it because to me i lo- not it's not just the sex scenes it's so re- i it's love real. the whole i love yeah. murder i love that whole <laughs> thing like i love when he was like how we've been faking it like i love all that shit because this is shit that i like i feel like people in the audience are discovering the same way that i did like I had gay friends, but mm-hmm. I never really 
question you didn't know sometimes the conversations about who we are who yeah. these people are whether they are the dancers well, or even take it just just to be in southerners yeah oh, just oh, to be just, in the south and what that life is and you like can't, yeah it's just so much like like even bottoms tops all that shit mm-hmm. i learned when when i got my stylist and my mm-hmm. my hairdresser and stuff so not, you did not know about bottoms I, well and tops. when i started watching rupaul and stuff i used to be like what does that mean and i was like and i was like oh hell yeah well mm. i'm a nasty ass bottom trust <laughs> <laughs> trust dirty okay but <laughs> no, I love it. No, because there was one time I remember even in life, my mother asked me one time. She was like, "Are you above or beneath?" And I was like, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> this conversation. She was like, you know, I, I know. She was like, I, "I hear these things that are in in the LGBTQ culture. Like, are you above or beneath?" And I was like, "Mama, I don't know what you're talking about." Mm-hmm. But I, what I'm understanding is that literally, there are a lot of people, allies or not, that are really learning about the community. Oh through the show and, and that i think is that, what we got to give some because grace it for. was so fucking good it was it was not only that it's almost showing an empathetic side to like very much to what i'm going to speak about later is like how men really are not free to really be who they are and women women i'm not saying that women aren't have some hesitation because y'all done took our fucking rights but and i will always say that <laughs> yes. but but i'm saying that it just looked upon more for a woman to fucking explore who they are mm-hmm. than a man. A man has to be just the staple. Like, like Richard Pry has the best fucking joke. He's like, women get to fucking go to therapy, but men just walk in the middle of the street and let a Mack truck hit them yeah. because mm-hmm. they don't, they mm-hmm. don't fucking know how, you know, how to feel. And so, if you dare allow yourself to, yeah, dear and God, the, what you going to do? And let me tell you one of my not favorite because but it impacted me in a way that I was like I I remember just shaking watching the scene mm-hmm. of of him sitting there when the dude wanted to take his life and mm-hmm. I was just like when Big T Big yeah, T John because Stewart let me tell and you, J. Alphonse let me tell you I I have said it many times I've said oh I wish I could be the spirit that could quantum leap to people who are about to take their life so I could talk mm, to them and be like, really? that I can talk them out of, like I always was like, if I was there for Marilyn Monroe, I would have been out like, bitch, let's go drink. Let's let's go, you know, you're not Girl, gonna, you playing, that's a like, show. Uh, like, I mean, I just really- This is a show, you know this, yes? Well, I just always thought that I could do that. But when that moment, uh-huh. he was talking to, it made me, I was just crying and shaking because I was just like, he's talking to him. He's telling them, don't do this. Like, I'm here, for, like whatever that's you right. need, I like, I, I'm here, like you. I hear you. I see you. And he still was like, "I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not gone. gonna. I'm. I'm not gonna survive. It's too late." That's right. Mm-hmm. And it just was so. And and the fact that he was just like, "Well, all right, mm-hmm. I'm fucking gonna still sit here because be you're here not you. gonna let. I'm not gonna let you do this by yourself." That's right. And it was just, damn. It's a level for me of 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 intimacy that you don't always get to see, not only amongst men but amongst again when you talk about traditional quote unquote gangsters right right you just think that they don't have any feelings just like people thinking with the show that strippers don't have any feelings, right right you know and or then, life or yeah, hustle uh, outside of like what like this what world the is. fuck you think well that's the first thing they thought is that they wanted to clap their fucking ass yes. like and like if they did there is a joy to it well, there is me, a little a level me, of celebration that you, you don't have no holds on when i worked at roscoe's i remember working at roscoe's and i had to work the the night shift on mm-hmm. friday night and the strippers would come in about two o'clock in the morning and nobody would want to wait on them because they was like i ain't fucking said they like i would Why? wait they got but, oh they nasty oh they we don't know what the fuck they been but i would i would what? wait on them bitches and kiki with them and get them extra chicken and shit them bitches would roll off money <laughs> like i man i would walk out of there i would walk away with that table like two or three hundred dollars yeah. just from fucking serving them they'd be like oh no 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 but they hoes though <laughs> Because I was like, they sure made more money than your ass tonight. Right. But or what was your ass doing while you were You show to, that you in know? the show, too. Like, you show the, the Bible thumpers what they think of them mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. So it's a really good justice, especially with Mercedes and her mother. Oh, my God. It's almost. Oh, my yeah. God. It's back and, and, and like, forth. Harry, oh, as boy, much, as, much yeah. as I hated her at the beginning. Why? It's like, because I fucking hated what she did to Mercedes. And I hated that she hypocritical. Because I, I felt like that was some bullshit. But then I watched how they showed where her life was. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, wow. There's a. Hurt oh, people. Well, hurt me, people. And the I cycle, the right? Res- I got the respect of fucking hustle. Because mm-hmm. she dressed like a stripper. 
to do. And I was like, well, fuck. She said, I told y'all. I told y'all. I, I was a hoe. She said, I, I told, told y'all. I hoe. I, I hoe so you could fly. Oh, I <laughs> hoe so you could fly. I done sucked so many dicks. And I was like, she said, I did that's the politician. Fraud. She said, I'm voting for that bitch. I'm voting for that bitch right now. You are fucking my mayor, bitch. Because you, you want to tell the truth. She going to tell, tell the, the truth. truth. Like, right. I was like, oh, my God. Devil. So good. Yeah. And I like the fact that she came back around and gave her child Gave the child back to mm -hmm, Mercedes. Mm -hmm. Let's hope that that works out. I pray that it does. Because that, that was, that was, oh my God, Mercedes looking out that window. Every girl mm -hmm. that's ever been there was like, please, please do the clicker. Please, 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 please do the clicker. Yeah. And when she did it, I was screaming. And then to see Mercedes' face, I was like, yeah, bitch, I get it, bitch. <laughs> oh! Which way do you go in terms of having a choice? I think it's because Mercedes didn't have that choice right. in her life. And that was a part of her way of breaking the cycle to be there and be exactly. present for her daughter. It's so good. Yeah. So fucking good. I love Keyshawn Star. Mm -hmm. Even though. That's my Shannon. It, Shannon it, Thornton. It really shocked me. I, and I swear the whole time I'm just like. Why does this white boy get to beat this girl? I mean, there's too many brothers in that town. Why they ain't fucking... I know they know this shit is going on. What the fuck? Why they ain't doing that? But then I'm like, yeah, but somebody did try to do something. Yeah. And she fucking protected him. Because yeah. that's just an abused woman. They yeah. ain't got shit to do with race at this point. Well, the thing about it is, I think, when it comes to abused women and people in general, you know it usually takes about seven times for people to try to leave. Really? Before really? Before they are successful. Yeah. I did not know it that. It takes about seven times. So... Like I it, did know that it's it's very real. It's very real. Part of uh, I think one of the things that resonates so well with the show is the fact that the writers have really either have lived experiences, mm -hmm. whether they were. I, I know Katori used to. Um, what do you call that? Volunteer. She used right. to volunteer at like crisis centers wow. in New York. You know, and so seeing some of these things and being present for people as they constantly are. You know, they come back. And then they're back again next the next month or two or three months. Because they later. go back. Yeah. Because it's like it's like a it's like a I, I'm I can I, I nobody's ever been bold enough to hit me, but I have been. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause, I, I cause you, hit, you hit me and you gonna knock me back into sense. I'm be like, oh, I gotta <laughs> I kill lost you it now. I lost, oh, it, for I lost a moment. it for a minute, but thank you for knocking me the fuck back on the rack. Because I'm Lenny, gonna, I'm don't gonna you fuck do you up. it. I'm don't not. you do it, Lenny. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I fuck Richard I up. Oh, her. I fuck Richard up. I fuck Richard up one time. Like, oh my God, he went to even reach me, and I grabbed the iron and knocked this motherfucker. Well, see, that's a whole see, nother. but now see. what about the reverse though? Because men can be abused too. Oh well, I didn't abuse you. Well, you talking about picking up? Are you talking <laughs> about picking up? That motherfucker grabbed me though. Okay. Nico, okay. he grabbed me okay. though. Did he use his words? No, uh, he was about to do some <laughs> use of something, and I was like, my daddy said, "Don't take no motherfucking chance." This is true. My and mama did say, "Pick up a brick and knock him upside the head." Exactly, motherfucker. If you was tapping me on the shoulder, that's what you should have said. Hey, I'm about to tap you on the shoulder. No, no. That motherfucker went to grab because he was mad because I did something. He went to grab me, and I was like, "Oh hell no!" Pow! <laughs> so, Miss Sophia said, "Beat her." Exactly, because my mm -hmm. I swear my grandmother used to be like, "They got the piss and they got the sleep." That is correct. <laughs> And that is uh, And I used to do a joke where you got to piss, you got to sleep, and a two-by-four by the fucking knees will stop any abuse in the motherfucking mm -hmm. house. I swear Jeez. to God, that nigga will be scared. Mm -hmm. At my mom, my, my dad hit my mom one time. It was the one time I saw my dad hit my mom, and my mom waited till that motherfucker went to sleep. And she poured hot water on him and beat him That's with right. a fucking broom. That's right. He never hit my mom again. Now, he might have shouted loudly, mm -hmm. but he did it from the other room. That's correct. And he didn't do it to her face. That's right. I know when my dad would get extra sometimes, you know, my mother would say, do you need to go somewhere? <laughs> do you need to calm the fuck down? Do I need to go to another room? Because I know it was just a look that my mom would give my dad, like, do we need to repeat what the fuck? You sleep too hard, nigga. You sleep too hard Your in mom gave house. your dad a timeout. That's so funny. It's, right. Yeah, my, uh, yeah we, I, uh, listen, I, I come think from, that's healthy, though. I it came from strong-ass women. There was nobody. I remember my grandmother telling me her beating up four white men. Because, you know, this is the day uh -huh. that she came from. She had to beat up four white four. men. And they threw her in jail because they was fucking coming after her. And she beat their ass. Come on. And they threw her in jail. And my granddaddy, my great-granddaddy, went down there with a shotgun and said, you're going to let my daughter go. Okay. 
I mean, that's this. This that's is what, what I'm is. saying. That's so what this is why I be like, I was like, y'all don't understand like history. Like, so when I watch P Valley, I go, this is like, thank you for this refreshing, mm. fucking real shit. It's real. That is actually still inner fucking taining. Yeah. <laughs> Does that make sense? Absolutely. You know, like the fucking music is great. The music the is the character. The stripping is. Fucking magnifa fucking scent. When this history. bitch came down the pole, <laughs> standing on the other oh, bitch, I was like, "Is she using the bitch's ass for a stage? Yeah. This is a miracle." Surfboard. How these hoes surfboard, ain't one of surfboard. the best paid occupations? <laughs> these hoes need to be up there with therapists. It's a not with a therapist. It's like an <laughs> Olympic sport. You know, it's the physicality. It's so dope. But you also get to see what the body gets to do. You yeah, know what I mean, and I think a lot of times people just like they think that you're just pretty or you just have tits and ass. You know, no, what I'm saying? they using not... real muscles. muscles real yeah. muscle. Like when they come climbing up that pole, I'm like, oh my Jesus! Mm -hmm. I would have quit after the first time my pussy hit the floor because <laughs> when 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 she did that flip and then a pussy bam, bam, I was like, yeah. Jesus! She didn't broke all the pussy bones. All the pussy bones. No, all no, the no, pussy no. bones is broke, son. So you got to pull up as a dancer. Pull you know, up my to pull ass, up. man! All this pelvis, all this. See, I would have That's been on right. the floor like, y'all come get me now. <laughs> come get me now. Still put the ones over there. Put the ones diamond, over there. Diamond, somebody come and get her off the floor. Cold blue. Cold blue. Bad and, bitch down. And who is the girl? The girl that's the, the gangster, the one that's being the pimp right now. I, I, Roulette. I Roulette. like That's Gail her. Bean. I love Gail I Bean. like where she's going. to <laughs> Down in the valley, baby. I was like, that's right, bitch. You are gangster. I know so many roulettes. No, so many. Okay, so if you, if both of you actually, if you had to be a character on the show, who would you be? Ooh. Oh, I want to. Oh God, if I had the strength, I want to be one of them scrippers so bad. <laughs> Which one? I, I want to be. I don't care any. I want to be the worst <laughs> scripper though. I want to be when I get on the stage, I just start telling jokes. They be like, bitch, I can't get off the stage. Uncle Clifford is not going to let is your you, ass. Get, and then that's what you're going to be like. Is that bitch out there telling jokes and ain't shaking ass? Clifford rule number 57. Get your ass off the stage, bitch. <laughs> the chicken cannot cross the fucking street. <laughs> maybe the DJ or maybe the bartender or something. I just want to be in the club. I thought you was going to say toy. Bouncer. Like maybe toy. Because she's always, you know, the one she used to fart on everybody. Used to, no, the, the I, I think she gas. nasty because I'm like, bitch, don't be doing out there while you fart. Don't nobody want no fart yeah. coming out of no ass while you <laughs> popping it. That's disgusting. <laughs> I, I was like, and Toy gave your your auntie COVID. I'm mad at Toy. Listen, I, I am too. I am too. She, I'm mad at her, but she, she ain't had to become a hoe. She could have came and talked to you later. Listen, she got bills to pay. She, no, but she, she could have came and talked to you later no, and no, said, no, no. baby, There's I'm so sorry. There's nothing to talk about. I don't care but, what but, you say. But There's your auntie didn't My live. grandmother, your grandmother ain't got nothing. No, she got COVID in the hospital. That was a rough time for everybody, that was for so, real, for real. But it was so good because you all story, like, oh, it was just so fucking good. Leslie. No, I would want to probably be a bouncer. Oh, the bouncer, yeah, maybe. <laughs> what, well, you know what's funny about that? There is only one kind of one and a half bouncers you got diamond but what yeah. you mean i mean it's only yeah, diamond. How many, it's diamond, diamond, diamond and the other guy doesn't really like diamond. Diamond. he's not that tough and well i Ooh, you see that, that. oh big l they're very... coming for no, no, you no no they yeah, coming yeah, for you yeah, yeah, i'm not scared of <laughs> big l like left and baby, the who's the other guy who's the other guy big l big l oh big l yeah big l i'm not scared of him yeah i'm not scared of big l yeah, tell Big L, I'm not scared of him. Really I think out. I have to go to Big L's go, suck these titties, Big L. He'll be fucking like, well, yeah, I'll give you all of the well, oxy and everything. You, you, like, you, like, you might be right on no, that. No, I want to be, right be right a, a hardcore, like, I want to be a gay hardcore bouncer. Like, hardcore, just be up in here, just like, that's right, baby, go shake that ass. Get your motherfucking mm. ass up. Off. Like, you know. Just, That'd be a good character like, for that show. In the bike club, in the bike club. Yeah, yeah, huh? That would be a good character for the show. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like y'all, y'all, y'all been letting too much shit go off in this motherfucking champagne room and shit. And so I'm gonna fucking break it down. But I'm on the other side of roulette, like bitch. I get ten percent of that fucking oh my god pussy that you selling. Oh, Lenny, you Leslie wanna... is over here with her bottles and James trying to get up in the champagne room. Who you gonna be? I'm gonna, gonna be. Gonna be wait, I I forget his name. He's you know the Obama guy. You know the the guy that's working. Andre. With. Yeah, I'm, the... that's the closest I can get to. I this just want show. you to know that is a classic P Valley joke, and you. Are, 
what you are now a part of yeah. the pink posse because you said the Obama. <laughs> he is the great value Obama. Yeah. You talking about oh the, the, the Andre, the, Andre I, I, Parker I, I Sawyer hate and love him at the same time. I can't stand his character, but I love his character. That's the, the only thing time. I could even come you close need to Andre. play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You need one, right? Exactly. You yeah. need one. So then we doing it right, y'all. Yeah, yeah. you are. Come on, come oh, they got out. me so mad at that light skinned bitch. Woo! <laughs> Because first of all, I was like, okay, you're not beautiful, bitch. You look like you mixed with Eskimo. No, she not. She looks Eskimo and black. First of all, if you ever been to Alaska, they look just like them bitches. They look just like her. And I was like, oh, she from Alaska. That bitch from Anchorage. I can't not Anchorage. Anchorage. She's from England. Fairbanks. Yes, exactly. Oh, well, I I don't like her because you can't trust the light-skinned bitch. What? You're going to leave my Ellerica Johnson alone. Yeah, she's that means she, she just, played the fuck out yeah, that she part, did. right? I know she does. I've yeah, seen does. interviews. Yes. I've seen interviews <laughs> yes. with her, but you cannot. And she smiles, but you cannot find a picture of that lady online smiling. Not one. She's just got that. Oh, she doesn't smile. She does That's not. Because she but got in that, interviews, she, she is smiles. smiling. That's an Eskimo smile. <laughs> but she's well, British. Have you she's seen Brandy great. though? Brandy, yeah. bad as hell, man. Bad. I like. I was Listen. like, like she just. I just love. Just the whole, the whole show, just every character. And Loretta, the next time you see her, because mm-hmm. Loretta was with me. We did lottery ticket together. Uh-huh. Loretta was on the set with me when my brother passed away. Loretta oh. Devine. And she walked over to me, sat beside me on the chair, and she was like, ain't this when it happened, girl, when you're on set? I done lost so many sisters and aunties and mm. all that. And, we, and she was so wonderful. And She's I, real with that. She I will love always her. give you a moment. She is very yes. everything. I'm going to be present. Yes, all tell her things. hello. I love her. And she is killing it on this show. I love her. Oh, Les, I love her whole background, everything. Les, yeah. can I ask him she a couple questions about Uncle Clifford? Yes, okay, sorry. Please. No, no, it's not so sorry. <laughs> I mean, we can talk about that. You'll go back to it. Uncle Clifford is, um, you, you did him in a play, right? It started with her play. And so, uh-huh. how was the process from the play? Where did you meet? Uh, this um, is a play. Oh my yeah, God. Where, yeah, the play is actually called Pussy Valley. Right. I would have. And where did you do that in New York? Shit on stage. Well, it started in New York, Lenny. Um, we started at the Lark Theater back mm. in 2009, and they, they commissioned Katori for it, and they had the um, you know workshop series. So we did it for I think the first time we did it was two weeks. Two weeks working on it, um, and then we did it again at the Lark, and the when with the Pony Awards, it was a part of another workshop, and that was a week. And then the producers, because she was shopping to get produced, and then the producers were like, oh, but you can't do this play with actors. You need dancers. And so, okay, so then it was paired up again with a group of dancers, of, of real, like, pole dancers, that could read, you know, they were all audi- <laughs> they auditioned and everything like that. <gasps> and then that's when people saw Oh, they, oh the story is about that? that's a documentary. It Please is. tell me that they documented it is. that. It Please is. tell me she's gonna I want to see that whole mm-hmm. process. Yeah. Please tell she me. She got it. Katori has it. Tell I, her that's I don't a- know if she is gonna ever release that because the intention with Pussy Valley, it one, it's a real neighborhood down in Memphis, Tennessee. It was a housing development. Pussy Pussy Valley and Hurt Village, like the Hurt Village Hustlers, wow. the gangsters in the show. Yes. Those are true old ho- housing developments. Um, Pussy Valley has been since torn down. Um, but okay. we did it there. Then when we did it with the dancers, people understood that, oh, she's right, that you need to be able to act to tell this story. The dance supports the story, but this is a show that is literally about these marginalized it's people. It's just not about the damn It's not stripping. just about tits it's, and ass. It's just so has so many levels of yeah. fucking awesome. It's layers to this cake. It's like one of them yes. seven layer cake, you know, you know, yes. you all that stuff. So you Christmas you went from that and stuff. you went from that play to she hired you to do the show immediately or did you no come on now you know this thing called really? hollywood baby i had to shuck buck and dive for this really yes yeah, so why you're the, the that's your part you're the literally uncle clifford to i me. i i brought it to life you know it's katori's vision uh she i the, her vision behind it was you know capturing a person that could be totally free of the societal strings of what masculinity and what femininity could be just if someone could just be totally free and accept themselves so boom we had that and then she had 
had, I later found out some other influences that she told me that kind of influenced the character between her mother, her father, and her real Uncle Clifford. Mm. Um, and I've met all three of them. Uncle Clifford is nothing in real life like Uncle Clifford on TV, <laughs> you know, <laughs> not at all. And Uncle Clifford, you know, on the show uses she and her pronouns and is a non-binary person, a member of the LGBTQ community. And from there, we did 2015. I had moved out to L.A. For I left New York. I was like, okay, moving, leaving theater behind for a moment. Let me transition to on camera. And I was out here and then I got a call. I was like, okay, so... We're going to be producing the whole show. So, you know, I want to know if you want to meet the director, blah, 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 blah. I met the director, Nataki Garrett, at the time. Um, and boom, we went to Mixed Blood Theater in Minnesota. And so we wow. did the show there. That was the first time that we had the full, full production. And I was like, oh, I didn't move to L.A. just to do another play. What am I going to do? I, you know, my god sister said, well, what did you move for? I was like, to act. She said, you're acting. So go act. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I did. And I'm grateful that I did. You know, I, I was going to do it. But, you know, when you're in the throes of things and you waiting on this thing to hit, like whatever that's supposed <laughs> to be. You never see that it's right in front exactly. of you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. This thing that had been riding with. That's how I know God is kind. Mm -hmm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because it's been a long ride. And oh, you know, still, I know. Oh, baby. I, I didn't make it to, I was 47. <laughs> baby. Trust and believe. And, and SNL was not the fucking way I thought I was going to get in at okay. all. Okay. At all. But when you say open to it. And that's exactly what happened. And, and, and until, sometime, until, baby. until I opened myself and to the whole process, that's when I started doing good at SNL. Mm. I was at, I was even there still like fighting. I don't process. want to do that. That's not how I do it. That's not what the fuck I do. I don't do that. Let me do that. And I was like, no, you, you need to start respecting this fucking process because mm. you're getting your portfolio widened. That's correct. You know? Do you know they just, there's a whole tweet that's going on right now about like who's going to host SNL. And then somebody said, the cast of P Valley, oh, we want Uncle Clifford. We want yeah, Uncle Clifford why not? and the girls to come on down. And oh I my said, God. Great. come on now. That can, Listen, that can, what? we would, like babe, if I was there, babe, I would be asking for that. I would babe, be like, at least babe, you for sure. Babe, B, let's come on, let's, let's bring it, let's bring oh all my, this oh, color up think, to New York I City. Think we all can make that happen. Folks, Leslie, can we put it in the word? I don't know. I don't fucking know. But come on, Leslie, drop that. Come on, you know, Child, give them that MI, quick letter, quick letter. Oh my God. And when I when I'm telling you, that's how we used to spell that shit. And I was like, the fact that they, I was like, we, We've been doing it forever, and the fact that they made it, fat, I just like, I love that. Into a song, well, too. There, absolutely. There is an old hand clap song. You know that song, Zing, yes. Zing, Zing, Like a Wash Machine? This is the, the theme song is rooted from that old uh -huh. song of oh. Down in the Valley with the Hanky Panky, where the bullfuck jumped yeah, from bank like, to bank. Like, 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 yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's where the whole thing kind of comes from. So it's re everything a part of this show has so tethers. Good to real life you know people say oh this is not real someone wouldn't you know be no gangsters gonna really kiss a non-binary you know no. and i was like mm, no it happens no no that's the things that i found out from my friends i was like yeah it happens <laughs> and it's oh. just it's it's been in the dark it's been in the shadows yes so and this it's is our time to stand so in the sun well. it's shown for those, so well for those people show. don't watch the show so the uncle clifford character um, mm -hmm. I guess it's a him, but he she identifies as she dresses up in she and her she and her yeah, amazing outfits. Yeah, because fashion. You do, do you make up the outfits or, or yeah? How do they, those they outfits? Have a design, yeah, we have costume designers. Yeah, okay. uh, I was uh, gonna uh, say, uh, do you have anything <laughs> to do with that or no? I, I do. The first where it starts is on the page. Okay. Uh, Katori is very specific in terms of what she sees. So, for example, the beginning of season two, that whole crown ro the, in Pussyland. Yes. You know, I was I was thinking about that for your birthday too, for your the, for party. for the uh for the the, the, the car, car wash. wash. Yes. Oh my, Lenny, you can see Pussyland for for Leslie's birthday. <laughs> wow. Now. That you you know you was talking about you know stilt walkers and things like that. But yeah. you know I, if you want to oh, know Pussyland to come in for your minute. birthday, let me know. It, like some strippers. Oh, I, I mean would love I mean strippers, strippers, the dancing, the walk. Water, the I show, would love the all wave, that. the Mercedes experience. I would love all of that. Oh my God, if Mercedes <laughs> showed up to my birthday party, I would die. I would Is die. she in LA? Bring her. She is, yeah. She is out here? Mm -hmm. Bring the whole cast. Uh, it, Bring the I whole, whole cast. In, in the South. She is from the South. She too is also from Memphis. 
but she lives here. Oh, we got to get her yeah, in here. here. We got to get her oh, in we gotta here. Get her. Listen, listen, we got to get I mean, you know, you mess around. You may have Mercedes on the horse and Diamond on the horse. And, you know, <laughs> listen. Don't play. <laughs> yippee yay yay yippee yay yay Don't Come play. on. Stop playing with me. Get book up in her. What the fuckery? <laughs> Nico, let me ask you this about Uncle yeah. Clifford. What do you, I've oh, yeah. seen a million interviews with you, but you never answered this. What do you think of him? Uncle Clifford since childhood has been called Uncle Clifford. Mm. When you see the young version of Uncle Clifford, uh, episode seven, yeah. episode seven in yeah, season yeah. two, you see the baby run across the, the, the dance floor towards the jukebox. And Uncle Clifford's mom says, come here, Uncle Clifford, you know, l- listen that grandmother sing. Mm-hmm. I think that from the childhood of having the moniker of uncle, but still identifying as she and her, there is a juxtaposition that happens there that requires you to see all of her, Mm. requires you to see all of the person. So when I think, what I think of Uncle Clifford, I think Uncle Clifford is a beast. Mm. Um, This may sound a little cocky. This may sound a little cocky, but when you got a fat ass, you could do so. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, oh, I'm I think, he just, like, I love, that's the thing that I love. I just think that Uncle Clifford is, like, flight to mm-hmm. me. Um, uh, Katori had mentioned, she mentioned two animals, butterflies, uh, eyelashes like butterfly wings, and nails like eagle talons. <laughs> that was a part of the character description initially from the play. Mm-hmm. From the very, when she only had five pages that I first read of the show, those two animals have always seeped inside mm-hmm. in terms of the construction of the character for me, in terms of butterflies and thinking metamorphosis, uh, the cocoon stage and the flight, the gentleness of it match with the ferocity of eagles mm. and how eagles take care of their children, their babies, their little eaglets. You know, they put them on their wings. They they spread their wings so that the eagles can ride on them and then they drop their wings and the babies they fly and they start flapping in the in the wind and then they raise their wings up again to catch them mm. so that metaphor that vision of just those two animals kind of gave me a whole psyche and construction for the character and as i'm acting and becoming all the things i don't have um certain limitations so thinking of her is is boundless i i feel like uncle clifford is a boss i feel like uncle clifford is a lover it's interesting because you never, I never experienced a, a full being a big man myself thinking that this thickness wasn't allowed to be appreciated and sexy mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. and and loved on That's in a certain so way. Yeah. So to see that even as a dark skinned man, mm-hmm. you know, there was a time where like it was only about Shamar Moore. Yeah. You know, yeah. I love you, Shamar. But like, you know, the Shamars of the world in terms of being fair skinned and you know then you have these african features you got this full lips this broad nose this gap in your teeth you know so to have all of those things and be uncle clifford and be she her (laughs) and to be in this misogynistic world but still respect it and still respect it that's the thing that i still respect whenever i see uncle clifford i think of stability because everybody yeah. everybody runs to Uncle Clifford when they need something solved. So mm-hmm. they obviously know that you know what the hell you're doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Yeah. That, and that's the one thing I learned about the community, too, is that, oh, wow, they don't they think everything is attractive. Yes. Does that make sense? Like, there's no such thing. That, I mean, yeah, there is the gorgeous dudes. Oh, like course. what your type is. Or right. Everybody yeah, has a right, type. Ever, right. Mm-hmm. But then they have just people just like when I would watch RuPaul and stuff, I was like, oh, wow, they, they that guy gets laid a lot. Oh, that guy gets like, oh, because there is no real type. It's mm-hmm. just about love. I also think that you start to see spirit. Yeah. That you start to see people's energy and like that's what that soulmate thing is really about. Right. Like, you know, oh, I'm really attracted to, I don't know what it is about this person, but you know. I'm really attracted to, yes. Yeah. Uncle Clifford also that. has like a great morality to him. He's got a million rules, right? You got she all does. the, yeah. She, she's got <laughs> yeah, a million rules. Like, I, my, my, like, nope, my, 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 uh, she sent me um, rule number 57. Yeah. She sent me, she said, rule number 57, no coins in the G string, only, only dollars. dollars. That is correct. Like that one. Rule and number then, one, let that stage be a stepping stone, not your tombstone. She, yeah. Wait, she, Leslie got notes up here. Yeah, I got notes. This is Because I love this. I, when I love a show, I love a show. 24.5, uh, no crying at the pink. What's 24.5? No okay, crying at the pink. Yeah, no, no crying, crying at, at the, the pink. pink. That's our favorite rule. At no the crying pink. at the pink. Come on. 
Yeah. Yes. What's rule 88? What's rule 88? Uh, rule 88. Mm. If anybody in here know what rule 88 is, we get a good twerk session. We're going to break. What? Let's go. What's rule 88? I don't have rule 88. Oh, no. Oh, okay. no. Okay. It's all know. right. It's all right. It's What's all right. rule 88? You got to tell I me. Got- Just because a bitch is good at keeping the peace don't mean she's bad at making war. <laughs> That should be my, that's my saying. What? That's right. Listen, because sometimes people take advantage I, well, of you I, being nice and they think that I that is a I was literally just fussing Wait, at somebody today. She says that today. all the time. She I literally said that says I was that like, you, And this is what I said to, the, I said this to Jay and them today. I said, see, you guys don't fucking listen when I'm talking nice to you. Mm-hmm. Y'all taking the mm-hmm. niceness and you're not, and then I have to come back and fucking snatch your fucking asshole out. <laughs> that's right. And that's what you listen to. I don't get why you don't take the niceness first. Sometimes people just want you to snatch their wig. I don't get that. That's annoying. <laughs> Who knows? Who and knows? With that rule seven, <laughs> seven 7.5, no witnesses. You want to do that one. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Let me find out. Lenny. You better go ahead and get it. Lenny, I love that. I told Lenny, I was like, I you got Wait. He's like, I'm gonna go watch a couple of episodes, and I'm not look me. at this guy. Yeah, she he got called me. me. He goes, "Oh it's my good. god, the guys!" I was like, "Is it because of the ass, Lenny?" He no. was like, "You know, you come for I the was like, yes, you, it is. You come for the strippers, but you stay for the characters. That's what I can say." <laughs> <about> <laughs> Sure. Hey, I'm not mad at that. That that means there's the some fuck? medicine in the Kool-Aid. Absolutely. There's yeah, some medicine well, in the Kool-Aid. Also, you know what I, was- <laughs> I come for the comedy, as le- as you guys would know. I come for the comedy, mm-hmm. and you, un- Uncle Clifford is very funny. Very He's funny. Very if you listen funny. close, wait, I got three oh lines God. from one episode that I thought were hilarious. I love when Gidget what? starts crying. We ain't got no time for white girl tears, although they're very <laughs> tasty. Like, what? <laughs> Uh, are you kidding me? Like you, I mean, they and, are. They're a little salty. You know, they're good on some okra. Uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe put it with a little lemon in it. They got that salty, sour taste. Keyshawn blabbed about something, and you go, "Well, Miss Mississippi, you sure was named after the right river because your aunt, your can't ass, eat. can't hold water for shit." No. I was like, <laughs> oh my god, that's a great. You know line. that river always flowing, baby. That river stay flowing. Oh my god, Keyshawn, she can't get a fucking break. So. <laughs> it be like that sometime, right? Fuck, it man, that like shit that. had me mad as fuck. I said, why would you take him to your fucking sister? Why the fuck you wouldn't do something where, else? Where, where, where is she gonna take but, him? But but first of all, y'all didn't plan enough for the mama not to come over because well, that bitch but, that can take mama? <laughs> first of all, I would have you... I would have punched that bitch right in the face. <laughs> bitch, you know that mother foul. Listen, but you see where she's coming from, where, where she is with her husband, right? Yeah, because she a dumbass. Well, she said, don't be a man's Barbie doll. When she came home from prom, when she was on I remember that, but then said, why the fuck is she still making trouble sometimes for her? Sometimes some people are more, uh, they're into like, let me be in a relationship versus I can stand up on my own. And if she, her her stepmother, can't stand up on her own. Hello? She, she a hater. They, I mean, listen. This bitch literally called the motherfucker, though. I would have been like, bitch, I, at any fucking time, ho. Any time. Did you see? Like, when yeah. Mercedes t- attacked her mom, I was like, okay, I legit feel you. And then when she attacked her again in jail, I was like, oh, my God. Thank you so much for really actually showing what somebody might do. Would do, yeah. But then she yeah, yeah. still, it still showed, God damn it, you ended up in this motherfucker. Like, because when the guy... Offered her mm-hmm, his the jacket. jacket. My heart yeah. just. You didn't know what that was going to be. You didn't know if he was going to assault her yeah, or what that was. It, yeah. it just, my heart just dropped. That moment always got me because it's like, you see Mercedes, she's up there like Wonder Woman. These women and are up there like just, Wonder yep, Woman yep. Yep. Just because they totally are choosing. Yep. When you have choice and you have agency to be strong, and you, yes, I can be up here, but now I'm here in this jail cell. I, I don't have any choice. And you saw like the shame in the body, you know, like, you know, she was like, I, I need to be covered. I need right. To, and it's not because she's ashamed of her body, but it's this environment. It's because it's, it, she's in danger. That is correct. That's what this is just like, oh, God, child. Let me, mm. It's the world. It's a metaphor for the world. The show is a metaphor for the world. <laughs> breathe, Leslie. Breathe. <laughs> breathe. Can I, Lenny, what else you want to Can ask? I just Go bring ahead, up one on, more moment that I thought baby. you were terrific? No. It, season one, <laughs> that same scene, after they get in, she misses her big night because she gets into the fight with the mom, right? Yeah. That's and then what she sucks. eventually goes back to the club, looks at you, and says, how did she do? How, how did uh, Keyshawn do in your place? And she killed it. And you were like, you're, you remember your reaction was, girl, she did. And you were about to say amazing. And then you see her face. You're like, she's all right. She's all right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you did that good, lady. You did that good. I was dying. Your yeah. 
shade barometer is good. <laughs> <laughs> You're ah, great. You're so good. It was so How fucking good. How are you not? Like my favorite part it, when she fucking went to the champagne room to uh, save the girl. Yep. And she was just so gangster with that shit. I was like, ah! I was screaming because I was like, where the fuck is that? Big hell, what the fuck, you, you said, motherfucker? You were in an Uncle Clifford moment. You are oh, having an I Uncle was, Clifford I moment was right going now. The fuck I, off. I was like, motherfucker! I, I just I couldn't like, believe how... don't go there by yourself! How fast she could run through a club upstairs, everything yes. in those high heels. In she those heels! Those... And, but that was that was real. We, I know. She ran did, that's live. Wow. Yeah. That's like I mean now she so did good. break she did break a pair. <laughs> but they're, they're, the heels break often. And it's one of the things actually that people don't really get. When you're filming that show, we don't actually get in Uggs and things like that on on in between they takes, you know, like or comfort shoes to speak, you know, like no, you have to be there. Even if the camera's not even on my feet, I'll be like, um, can I? Can I <laughs> and Katori's like, no, there's a height difference. Yeah. And, and that is yeah, intentional people, because yeah. men are traditionally, they look down towards women, right? Mm -hmm. And so to have this feminine character like Uncle Clifford and to have these men have to look up yeah. to femi femininity. Yeah. There's something in there, and how that changes people. So everything is truly, truly intense. This char yeah. your character, your character is like, girl. So it's I'm taking so the unique. shits off. Okay, we can stand it. I, I hope there. Are you under Emmy consideration? You're fantastic, and it's such a great part. I mean, is it stars? Mm -hmm. Is it because I don't know a lot of you know? It's very um, stars. What do you think about stars, Leslie? Like I didn't know well, the show I just existed. Feel like that they, I don't know if they even get the support their shows because Power should have got fucking nominated for mm -hmm. a lot of shit. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if stars like put the effort into pushing their shows. If this was on I HBO, you'd be nominated for an Emmy. I think I, that's my real. opinion. Well, let me tell you something from your mouth to God's ears and to the ears <laughs> of these listeners. What I want you to do is to go over here to Rotten Tomatoes and I am in the, <laughs> and I want you to put in your request to the Academy. Thank put you. Put in your request and I'm being very serious because I appreciate you saying that. Um, I, I know our network stars, it may not be as big as yeah. HBO, but let me tell you the work that we're doing is as impactful. You know, Absolutely. and I think it's a new day. I think that there's ways that the Good. that Jeff Hirsch, who is our, our our CEO, he's hearing these things. He's hearing you say that. Do you understand what yeah, I mean? Right. Yeah. And hearing you say that's not coming out of my mouth, you right. know, as a member of the cast, because I don't want to be that one that's like, oh, you know, I deserve, I deserve. Right. But what for me, what it's really about is giving light to the community, right? More to the community, more stories, more writers to be like audacious and just open and their yes. mind of like what they and can tell think. These stories. That's correct. Tell these that is correct. Stories. Everything should not be the same. We are it not shouldn't. all the same, so we got to have more stories that's going to tell the truth in different ways. It doesn't have to be the same formula. People thought like in, from hence from the I beginning. I say it all the time. Yep. I say it all the time. Y'all got to adjust to change. You got to adjust correct. to change. I started with a lot of great comics. A lot of them didn't make it because they couldn't adjust to change mm -hmm. it's like dinosaurs they couldn't adjust to fucking change and like real talk extinct. you do well, you really do it's a tremendous show thank you so much Nico I thank you it, I thank you for been... tuning in and coming on with your, your the tears and all the lines and the river <laughs> I oh, love it me. I got you got me I'm I'm in. When season three? You stay. Are you staying all? All right. You staying all the I'm way to staying. season two? And oh no, no. I'm, Four, like, five. I'm well, so I'm, mad that I'm in, it's I'm not in. I don't already. Yeah, y'all already all filming right. or what? Because I'm pissed that. Is I, there a season three? We haven't. We are praying that there is. <laughs> oh, Blink there shouldn't be no question. Yes. Yeah. There shouldn't be no <laughs> motherfucking question that, that that shit should not. That should be. I would be. Yes. Well, listen, so I, what I do know about working over at Stars, I know that they have the mandate of taking the lead. So they are, they are really amplifying marginalized voices, and Great. that's a part of the mission. And I do believe that they are trying to do it correctly. Okay. I do believe that they are they they understand that oh this because the show originally remember it came out in a pandemic. Right. And there were people and naysayers that did believe that oh it was the pandemic of it all. Right. The show really is it. I mean you guys no. did amazing numbers but it's because everyone was home and now we all outside and we on a champagne campaign like J. Alphonse says <laughs> it's little murder. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> champagne campaign. No, I watched we outside that, now. Out, outside of the pandemic I yeah. watched that. So. I, I, I know that people do and I know people of different nations nationalities and age groups do when i was in atlantic city i know y'all going to atlantic city what october 1st yep yes all right where y'all playing 
Hard Rock. Hard Rock. I wasn't at Hard Rock. I was at uh, I was at one of the casinos, you know, uh, or as uh, you know, as we say in Chuck Lee's, one of the casinos. casinos. <laughs> <laughs> I was down at one of the casinos, and there was this woman on a walker. She was talking, and she was pushing herself forward, and I had my mask on and everything like that. And one of the uh, talent uh, wranglers was walking me through, and she said, "Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Do you watch P Valley?" <laughs> and the woman, she she kind of looked at me like, I'm sorry, Nico. Like, And she was like, yes, ma'am, I do. And she said, he looked like one of the stars of the show. There you go. I said, oh, thank you. And I pulled my mask down and I said, thank you. She said, oh, I'm clever. <laughs> Uncle, this woman had to be in her 80s. And she comes yeah, she come, she come yeah. shuffling herself over with this walker. Come and give me a hug. She didn't care about COVID, monkeypox, no kind of nothing. And I was just like. I ha- like, and I'm black. She black. I had to hug her. Yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, yep. <laughs> she coming over this close. I'm like, I gotta throw my arms around you, you baby. Be, yeah. You throwing your arms around us and mm-hmm. our show. So you know, I'm forever grateful because folks that don't look like us. And the people who, yeah. who look like us. And famous. you're opening up a whole new world of people to, to be empathetic to the world, uh, the, to the life. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, okay, Uncle Clifford, like, they're not going to diss Uncle Clifford. Yeah. Does that and make know sense? that she's not just a joke. That's right. Exactly. Do you understand what I mean? I know that people, you know, Flip Wilson, everything back in the day, you know, Meshach Taylor, all of the things, they were gay characters right? right this is a non-binary character mm-hmm. and there are really people out in the world you don't know what how, what pronoun someone goes by just because of what they look like and can you because i i have to ask it please explain non-binary non-binary is i cannot be defined just by uh saying i am female or male i i am i embody all things so that's who you never know who i'm attracted to you never you you what are your preferred pronouns? Okay. You know, so some people, some people look like Nico. Okay. Every day, right? Okay. And still go by they. Okay. Don't call me he. I, I prefer they. So non-binary though, what is, where does that come in? Is I'm in the middle. I'm okay. in the middle. I can't be constructed by just the, the constructs of masculinity or femininity. Hmm. I'm not polarized. Wow. See, I feel like, there need to be a school about it because it's just so much. Like that, mm-hmm. that's a, like a whole like, explanation. I'd be like, "Well, shit." I mean, it's not <laughs> okay. Well, okay. What does it mean when you just want to fuck everybody? Pansexual. pansexual. Okay, that might be me. That's pansexual. <laughs> that might. Be, that might. Pan, pan. Why I got to be a pan? It's because you putting that thing in the pan, <laughs> baby, and shake it up. <laughs> shake, rattle, roll. <laughs> You know you got to shimmy when you say that. Shake, roll, roll. Go-dum, go-dum, go, shake. Well, you are oh, shaking it up. Roll. Nico, thank you yes, so baby. much for coming in. This is great. Thank you, Lenny. Thank you, Leslie. Hope, okay, where it's time for the fuckery of the week. Where Leslie and I fuckery rant. Fuckery of the week. <laughs> I wish it was that quiet and calm, our fuckery of the week. Um, <laughs> mine this week is, well... I don't know if you heard this week, roughly 45 million Americans collectively owe $1.7 trillion in student debt. Many of these borrowers are hoping for forgiveness. And over the past 10 years, college costs increased by more than 16% and student debt increased by 99%. Today, roughly 70% of college students take out loans to pay for their education. It is estimated that there are 43.2 million student borrowers owing an average of about $39,000 each. And this week in the news, there's been a lot of talk about federal forgiveness of student loans. But of course, there's backslash because some people don't want the federal government to give handouts to people who want a college degree, especially when they worked hard to pay for it themselves. Some people might not mind helping out a future social worker who makes 25000 but they're not as thrilled for a future Wall Street worker who will earn six figures. Some people don't want their taxpaying dollars to pay for other people's college. Some people believe that this penalizes people who scrimped and saved to pay for college, as well as the majority of Americans who don't go to college. Some people think it will cause an inflation problem. And some people actually think this is great. They're not saddled with debt coming out of college. But call me crazy. I think everyone should get to go to college who wants to go to college. Perhaps, Mm -hmm. probably the best experience of my life, except for meeting Nico today, meeting different kinds of people, (laughs) having to live away from home, getting out of my hometown, getting out of my comfort zone, responsibility, interpersonal relationships, dating, Mm -hmm. friendships. I made for life even crazy Dana. And oh yeah, a degree and some skills that, you know, employers want so you can make a decent living in life. And not everyone gets to go to college 
but everyone loves Mars. Wait, what? This week, the government attempted to launch the Artemis rocket program, which will have an ultimate price tag of $93 billion and promises to refocus oh NASA's long-term human <sighs> space flight goals for bases on the moon and missions to Mars. Okay, you see where I'm going here? We'll spend money on space, but not education. That is some fuckery. Yeah, I'm sure there's a good reason we need to be on the space race and boldly go where no one has ever gone before, but... But, but do we? Couldn't we just let Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk of the world do that or let them partner with the government? Yeah, this rocket launch is brought to you by Amazon Prime because even Martians need shit. And then you see a little green man watching a Top Gun mm -hmm. on his newly delivered widescreen TV. Come on, man. Use that $93 billion taxpayer dollars on something better like, I don't know, education. Let every kid who wants to go to college have a chance in this world be before dumb. we go set up shop in the next one. Yeah, because they want this fucking nation to be dumb. It's, we could be the greatest nation if we stopped all our goddamn bullshit, stupid fucking dumbass shit. We don't give a shit about our fucking. We just give a, a care about the dollar sign, the the top. It, it don't make no damn sense. They just want us to be dumb. dumb. They want so us to be dumb. So we can vote in That's people right. and just and we could just keep us stupid and sheep. And you and, and 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 these same people who claim that we are sheep are the sheep, which doesn't make any fucking yeah. sense. So it's just like it's dumb because you're stupid because they've kept you dumb <laughs> as fuck because you don't know that you're a sheep. Most sheep don't know that they sheep until they get fucked by a farmer. Hello. Let's go. Let's yeah. go. Ooh, like, I that's said word it. right there. I said it. I said <laughs> it and I meant it. All right. Let me give Leslie's ba a little background on Leslie's fuckery of the week. Uh, according to Business Insider, a licensed professional counselor named Shabri yeah. Rawls, a.k.a. at Unusually Bree on TikTok, posted a video in response to a Psychology Today article about men being increasingly lonely and single. Her videos followed the original posts, which were widely shared and debated on social media, and she ultimately was fired by the company she'd been working for since February. Here's a small piece of what she originally posted. Say you need to expand your emotional vocabulary. It's so your life can be easier. Don't you want to be able to communicate with your bitch? I think, I think yes, right? Long gone are the days where you can just shut down. Bitches is not tolerating that. Well, she got a lot of backlash for that. Leslie? Are you going to play Push this video? The therapist who thought she could save these hoes, but got her job terminated as a result. Story time? I think yes. Shit you not, I posted a video on Monday telling men that their dusty behavior is only harming them and that they would benefit from emotional intelligence. And I shit you not, by Friday, didn't have employment. All of this started with the Psychology Today article stating that men are lonelier than ever because they have no fucking emotional skills. And I agreed and doubled down and told y'all that y'all lives would radically improve if you expanded the shit that came out your mouth. But instead of healing, y'all will do anything but that. First of all, I, I what I said last week about men hating women, you know, this 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 whole situation right here, I'm gonna tell you for the basis of it, we got Kevin Samuels out there, we got Corey Holcomb's out there, we got real fucking poisonous motherfuckers that that don't have a degree that that are not therapists giving fucking information giving like advice and 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 dogging us and telling us we ain't shit there's always some man writing a book about how women can be better to men or 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 steve harvey on his fucking show telling black women or it's td jake saying oh there's always some fucking man telling women how to correct themselves and this professional who has been working as a professional therapist says, Hey, the reason that men are lonely right now is because you guys are not emotionally inept. So now we get her fired. We get her fired. Like, like, like I'm what's upsetting to me is, is, is the one thing I have to say to black people we hurt ourselves more than anything. We, I, I know that there is a systemic racism out there. I know that there's fucked up shit out there and we got enough to fight against. But our biggest problem is ourselves on how much we hate each other. I, 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 
I've I've been attacked by black women. I've been attacked by my own. And, and it don't make no motherfucking sense that we are attacking each other. The fact that a black woman t showed her address and her place of work. But the, a black woman, I could, do you get what I mean? I mean yeah, for sure. Well, for what she was saying, yeah, her delivery is rough. But I I don't think what she was saying was any different than what Kevin Samuels would be like. Oh, if you're over 30 and got a kid, you ain't fuckable no more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, what she basically said was something that black women have been saying. If anybody know black men, it's black women. We've been saying this shit for years. Hey, y'all need to get some motherfucking therapy. Yeah, listen, we all fucked up. We all need the therapy. We all listen. As far as a human, not this is not even black people. This is everyone in this goddamn world should be required to have a therapy session at least twice a year, if not just to get some shit off your chest. And that's some real fucking talk. But as far as black men, y'all really need someone to fucking talk to. Because y'all got a lot of anger that don't got shit to do with us. Yes, we have been put in a windmill of fuckery with white people. Yes, white people have played all kinds of tricks and bullshit and did all kinds of systemic shit. But there is a point where you start hurting your fucking self. Mm -hmm. A bitch is uh, mad. Listen, listen. A bitch was mad. Uh, <laughs> Come back anytime, Nico. I love your advice. I shall. I shall. You're a great personality. And, and I mean, I really love your show. And we thank you so much for coming in. And yeah, you not only giving fucking advice. awesome. Yeah, thank you're you. awesome. Thank That's you. the end of the yeah. show, everybody. Thank you for listening to The Fuckery. Just remember, any photos or links in this episode will be posted at Fuckery Podcast on Instagram. That's spelled F-C-K-R-Y Podcast on all platforms. Send us your listener questions to fuckerypodcast at gmail.com. Letters and voice memos are welcome. If you want to follow me, I'm Lenny Marcus NYC on all platforms. And follow Leslie at lesdog. That's L-E-S-D-O-G. Three Gs on Twitter, four Gs on Instagram, and five Gs on TikTok. Why, Leslie? Because I'm a motherfucking G, son! Yes. <laughs> the fuckery of Leslie Jones and Lenny Marcus was created and stars Leslie Jones and Lenny Marcus. The show is produced by Judith Cargbo, and our audio engineer today is Marina Pais. Music for the Pais. show is done by Marina Pais. This is an Earwolf production. Because the ears are on the wolves. <laughs> what the fuckery is that? <laughs> That's how we end it. <laughs>